Sergeant Mike Nichols, and on behalf of the Jacksonary Career Center, we want to welcome everyone to our 17th annual Army Junior ROTC Award Ceremony slash Military Ball. We honor our JCISD Board, Superintendent, and the entire administration at the Jacksonary Career Center. Our Junior ROTC staff, on behalf of myself, Michael Monroe, Ken Beasley, and Mark Stanaway, thank you for your continued support. We are here this afternoon to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of our cadet students. Our cadets have set the bar high in the area of academics, leadership, physical fitness, teamwork, and becoming outstanding citizens. We also want to thank uh, our guest speaker, Colonel Dave Hill, our award presenters, staff and administration, our Jackson Area Career Center Culinary Arts Program, they have provided a great lunch for us, a bag of lunch, and our military representatives. All the support of the cadets um, we receive from their families, we appreciate that. And at this time, would you just bow with me for a moment to recognize all military veterans. Thank you, and thank you for your service. At this time, we want to bring our guest speaker Colonel Dave Hill, but before he comes up, I want to read uh, his biography. Colonel Dave Hill was promoted to the rank of Colonel in 2002. He commanded two different battalions, and he was on the staff of the Commanding General's 21st Theater Command and the 3rd Corps Support Command in Germany and Iraq. His son, Jonathan Hill, was the first battalion commander of the Jackson Air Career Center Junior ROTC Golden Knight Battalion. His wife, Nancy, is retired from Baker College as Dean of General Education, and she has served on the Junior ROTC Advisory Board for the last 15 years. Colonel Hill had the honor of commissioning into the United States Army his son Jonathan and his daughter. Some of his credentials are he is an infantry person by the, under the branch of commission in infantry. He is also, or he also holds a Bachelor of Science from Indiana State University and he also has a Master of Science from Indiana State University. Some of the decorations he has achieved are the Legion of Merit Medal, Bronze Star, Meritorious Service Medal Commendation. He also has received the Army Commendation Medal, Army Achievement Medal, Joint Service Achievement Medal, Expert Infantryman's Badge, Iraq Campaign Medal with Campaign Star, and the Global War on Terrorism. So if you could please rise to your feet at this time and give a round of applause to Colonel David Hill. two miles in boots, but that was the first time I quit smoking. 
and ran the two miles and successfully completed advanced camp. There were 26 cadets in my commissioning class, and when you were you, uh, getting ready to be commissioned in ROTC, you put in a sheet to request your branch of service. In that time, you say, this, this is what I want to do. Now, I wanted to go into human resource management, and ATE is where you get that experience. There are 26 of us, uh, 20, uh, 25 got your first or your second choice, and I didn't get any of my choices. I went to my colonel and explained, or my colonel, and said, how did that happen? And he said, he said, Hill, he said, the infantry gets his first choice of cadets to be commissioned. I had done the advanced camp, or I had done well in the advanced camp, was getting a master's degree in the infantry, uh, got who they wanted to get. And so I was infantry at that point. The infantry school, of course, it was at Fort Benning, general officer in charge of Fort Benning, required that all soldiers in the base run five miles once a week in army boots and do a 25-mile uh, combat road march and full battle rattle with weapons once a month. That's you know, pretty much of a challenge, folks. You know, if you're, if you're running around with those boots on, no cushion. So, I, uh, you know, so what I did was I uh, was smoking for the second time. And then, what you, and then what I did was I graduated from infantry basic course with precise in both of my knees and a nasty case of shin splints, but I graduated. And that was part of that self-discipline and confidence that you could do that if you had to. I completed two years of active duty at Fort Knox, immediately had, got a good job as a human resources manager in the private sector. Didn't realize that I also owed two years of active duty or active uh, reserve duty, and uh, the Army sent me orders. So I went into the reserves, uh, and in the, in the next 25 years, I had a successful career as a human resource director, at the same time being in the Army Reserves. So I was, a, I had two successful battalion commands, and was promoted to colonel in 2002. And when you get promoted in the Army Reserves, they promote you, but you have to find a unit that has that slot, that has that rank, you know, that's available. I found a unit in Indianapolis, it was an augmentation unit for the 21st Spear Support Company, an active component uh, unit in Tiberslaughter, Germany. And, uh, and I went down and joined that reserve unit. You know, within six months, I was back at Fort Knox, being activated to go back on, the, you know, being back, and, you know, going back to active duty at age 50. Uh, you, you know, you have to look at things, folks, as you're going along, you know, you know, in the process. But the next, uh, from 2003 to 2011, I was more on um, active duty in Germany and uh, in Iraq uh, during that period of time. And I retired in 2011, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, as a covert colonel. Uh, and then at that time, they paid me for not working, and I do a good job of that, folks. <laughs> the, um, at this point, you know, as a result of considering JROTC, I had the opportunity to develop that self-discipline, confidence, and leadership physically and mentally, have successful careers in both the military and the private sector. You all are getting the same opportunity. You're, you are at where I was at in 1970, to be able to get your certificate of completion, to say that if you go in, you're going to get paid as a PFC, or go into the advanced ROTC, and in two years, become a commissioned officer on successfully completing those tasks. While I was on active duty, my son J.D. became the first battalion commander of the Black Knight Star JROTC. Both he and my daughter lived with me in Germany, and in the summers they worked for the Army. Both decided to pursue ROTC scholarships. Both got ROTC scholarships at Michigan Tech University. Uh, both uh, did over five years active duty at Fort Bragg. Both got their airborne wings. Both left the Army and have successful careers in the private sector. In some respects, folks, over 40, more than 40 years after I graduated from JROTC, that had a significant effect on their paths and their lives and how they developed that leadership just with self-discipline uh, and confidence that had to be done in that part. I should mention also that my daughter stayed in the reserves as she got out, had a command, company command, and got promoted to major. She's a 
year younger than my brother, my son. My son got out of the IRR and is still a captain. And my daughter's, uh, one of my daughter's high points in her life is to say now her brother has to call her man. <laughs> um, you're, you're, you know, I would like to finish my, by reading you know, a part of a speech by Major General Retired Wallace C. Arnold, a Hampton University alumni, and the second commander of the United States Army Cadet Command. And that this was a speech that he made to the JROTC Leadership and Academic Bowl in 2016. Your future is in your hands. It's not your mom's hands. It's not your JROTC instructor's hands. Your future is in your hands. You are going to have leadership challenges, but the most significant challenge is to lead yourself. If you can be sure uh, be, if you can be in charge of yourself and always do the right thing, be disciplined, and make sure your word is a good word, then you will begin to be qualified to lead someone else. You will have to take charge of your yeses and your noes in your life when nobody is watching you. That's your responsibility and accountability. Your future is bright because you can become young leaders in the future. It's bright because you have a chance to be a military, governmental, or civic leader. As you proceed to finish high school, establish a goal that's taller than you are, that you have to jump up to get there. You can reach those goals that you didn't think you could reach. You can. It's been an honor and privilege, folks, to be able to talk with you and spend some time with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's give Colonel Hill a round of applause. Chairperson and former Dean of General Education at Baker College of Jackson. So we're going to provide space for her to come up and address you for a moment. Let's give her a round. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for us to be here, and we thank you so much for allowing us to, to join you. It's a privilege. Um, as I look out at all of you, you all, you all look great, and we're just so proud of you. Um, we hear often about all the service that you're doing and the accomplishments that you're making, and we really are, are very proud of all that you are doing. We know that you'll do great things as you move forward. So thank you very much for having us on behalf of the board and um, Colonel Hill and myself. Um, we look forward to seeing what you're doing in the future and wish you much luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mark Foliano to come up, if you would, please. The lunch that was provided this morning by the uh, Culinary Arts Department here for the program at the Career Center, they provided the lunch. So we have a certificate for them. We want Dr. Foliano to receive that on behalf of Mr. John Helmer. And if he, Dr. Foliano can stay up here, on the back of your program, we also want to recognize Haley Warren, she is a student in the Jackson Area Career Center Visual Communications Program. She is the one that designed, printed, and even selected the paper and designed for our program. So let's give not only the culinary arts, but the visual communication Jackson Area Career Center Program a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Foley out, if you'd like to say anything to the cadets to address? All right, thank you, Dr. Foley out. So again, thank you, Colonel Hill, Mrs. Hill. We're going to start with our presentations. 
with the outside awards. We have a number of outside uh, organizations that recognize all the great things that the Golden Knight Battalion does, such as the Grand River Cleanup. We actually, during Veterans uh, Day, we do, or the Veterans Month, we actually have a number of cadets that go out and uh, perform color guard. We've been out to MIS, Toys for Tots, and those uh, outside organizations recognize the time and the service that we put in. Some of those organizations are the Daughters of American Colonists, the U.S. Army Reserve Officer Association, the Civil War, uh, Sons of the Union. We also have the Military Officers Association of America, National Sojourner, Military Order of World Wars, and the Military Order of Purple Heart. So for this afternoon, we would like our first uh, recipient of an outside award to come up, and that would be Cole Magdal. Cole Mack is receiving the <clears throat> excuse me, Civil, Civil War Award for the Sons of the Union from Mr. Nathan Tingley. It's for outstanding service to Junior RTC uh, and his community and his enlistment into the Marine Corps. Our next award will be the National Sojourner Award, and that would be Cadet Savannah Stiles. <laughs> this award recognizes outstanding uh, excellence in junior RTC academically, and also as a scholar athlete and in all areas of schooling. Mr. Bruce Archer actually provides this award from the National Sojourner Association. Congratulations, Cadet Stiles. Our next outside award will be the Military Order of World Wars. Ms. Mary Sue Leo provides the award and the recipient for uh, this year is Damian Valente. At this time, we're going to honor our uh, military vet uh, re recruiters. Uh, we have a number of recruiters that are here from the Army and from the Navy. We also have some enlistees into the National Guard in the morning class, and we have a couple of cadets that are enlisting to the Marine Corps. So at this time, I'm going to turn the mic over to Sergeant Press First Class Eric Newton from the United States Army. And then after Sergeant Newton, we'll have the U.S. Navy.
hats off to them. 16 years ago, I was in the same place. Um, I wasn't uh, JROCC, I didn't have one, um, but these guys have, have had the opportunity to learn the, the traditions and standards of the Army. You know, the, the Cadets' Creed is gonna soon turn into the Soldiers' Creed for Ludwig, and the Sailors' Creed, and the Marine Corps hymn, I think, right, is that a thing? Yeah, we'll go with that, Marine Corps hymn for now. Um, but we're here today to recognize their enlistment, and for, for Ludwig and Cadet Dufek, who couldn't be here today, uh, when they complete JROTC, they also get a promotion. So instead of going in as a private E1, they're going as a private E3, which is great. Two years of JROTC does most of them. Um, but I think I'll go ahead and pass it off to Navy for him to talk about uh, Cadet Yep, so the same thing, right? So all the branches, we got a written doing, right? We all have the same purpose, right? The same obligation to serve the country for whatever you want to do it for, right? That's the biggest thing. And then what they're doing, right, is a huge step in their life, right? Be a lot of changes that come along with the step, right? It's uh, something that you see a lot, you always have to respect it, right? Um, what these guys and uh, young men are doing, um, for the young females who decide to join later on, right? Um, they're gonna be doing a lot of things that people aren't comfortable with everything else, but in the, at the end of the day, right, they're gonna be better their lives for the better and better in America. So. Um, and so, Cadet Solsi will be doing a uh, Master at Arms, right? So, pretty much on the military police, for what the Army call it. Right, so you get to be able to like learn the different trade and everything else, right? And then use it to service country. So it's an awesome feeling. And a lot of respect for the young man. So but yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Cadet Ludwig is gonna be accepting uh, Cadet Pep uh, uh, Dufex Award as well. So he's gonna have to put it in both hands. That one's yours. Excellent. Let's give these enlistees a round of applause. Enlistees, attention. One step forward, march. All out. All the eyes. We're talking about. Outstanding. So we appreciate our service representatives presenting those awards. So we're going to continue with our awards. We're going to recognize uh, two of our top athletic awards. Uh, we have two from the PM ship. We have Cole Magda and we also have Cameron Kirsten. They actually were in the top 50% of the President's Challenge during our Cadet Challenge test. So this could be Cole Magda and Cameron Kirsten. Please vote. They will be receiving a medal for their uniform and they also will have their name already engraved on the plaque which will be on our cadet honor board in our program area. and information, and then our S3 normally takes care of our training, all of our operations orders, and S4 is very, very key in all of the uniforms and the things you send on the uniforms. So two staff awards we have, awardees for this afternoon are Cadet Katia Puffball Harbogast and Cadet Carmen Reddy. Please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Recognition Awards. This morning for our AM session, we have a cadet, Cadet DJ Clark Napoleon. He actually is in firefight in the morning that he was recognized for receiving the Good Conduct Ribbon and the Excellent Staff uh, Award. Uh, we actually have another student that's in firefighting in the afternoon. Uh, that is Cadet Devin Kircher from Jackson High School. He is actually receiving the Good Conduct Medal. And so we would ask that Carmen Reddy would come up and receive that for him, please. This is a ribbon that is actually going to go on his uniform. It's the N-3-10 Good Conduct Ribbon. And while she is still up here, we would ask Cadet Ellery Cox. Ellery Cox is actually in the Agri-Science Program here at the Jackson Air Career Center. She is going to be receiving not only the Good Conduct Medal, she is going to be receiving the Let's Service Ribbon, which is awarded to cadets for successfully completing uh, first quarter or semester of training of each year of Let's Service. Uh, unique thing about Cadet Ellery Cox, she is in our after school program, Charlie Company, and she actually, along with a few other students, remain here after school, and they are here from 3 to 4.15, and then she goes over to Jackson College and then makes her way home. So the cadets of Charlie Company want to recognize her outstanding service and dedication to DNRPC. So thank you. Let's give them another round. <laughs> so in addition to our special recognition awards, we have academic awards. The academic awards are given to cadets that have achieved a 3.4 or higher. Uh, we have a number from Bravo for the afternoon class. Uh, we have a total of 18 students this school year that have either received all A's and or no grade lower than a B for the entire year. So with that being said, uh, when we call your name, if you could just come up. Cadet Garrett Obama. Cadet Lundgren. <laughs> Cadet Cameron Persons, Cadet Cole Rankin, Cadet Damien Valente, and Cadet Tessa Watson. We actually have six more. We'll recognize those six after these. So Cadet Avonik has a 3.9 GPA. Cadet Ludwig. 3.7 GPA in Junior RTC. Cadet Persons, 3.7. Cadet Magda, 3.7. Cadet Valente, 3.6. And Cadet Watson, 3.5 GPA. So for this outstanding academic excellence, please give them another round of applause. So our next awards, we have a number of cadets that are on our regular team or extreme competition. 
Uh, they have a special cord, it's a teal colored cord. Uh, it is worn on their uniform, so we're gonna have uh, Sergeant Stanaway. Thank you, Sergeant Stanaway. So for the afternoon class, we have Cadet Jajetic. Outstanding, another round of applause. Morning, <laughs> step forward, march. Fall out. Oh, nice. Outstanding. So those cadets that already have their um, cords, if you could please report right up here so you can recognize Colonel Hill. As you can see, they already have their cords on. We want to recognize them and give them a round of applause. <laughs> These cadets have trained and trained all year. And uh, this morning, uh, we talked about our theme. Every year, we have a theme for Junior ROTC, and our theme was perseverance. So not only the Raiders, but all of the students have persevered this uh, school year. And we appreciate all the dedication and coming to school every day and doing what they're supposed to do. And so we want to recognize them. So cadets, attention. One step forward, march. All out. All night. Our last couple sets of awards will be our Superior Cadet Awards. The Superior Cadet Awards are cadet awards that are awarded to cadet, one cadet per that level. And there are three different criteria for this award. And the first criteria is they live the cadet creed. So we have a creed that we say every day. And the second thing is they are live by our motto, res not verbal, which is deeds not words, is their guiding principle. And the last thing is simply said, they set the example all the time. So the cadets that are receiving the Superior Cadet Award for today is Cadet Devin Kircher, and we'll have Carmen Ready receive that for him. Kyla Johnson, Cameron Persons, Robert Ludwig, and Cadet Jessa Watson. These medals we worn on the uniform. We also select one top cadet which is the Distinguished Cadet. It is one for all three of the companies. And once we have our board, we'll be not only recognizing the top cadet, but we'll also be posting that on our Facebook page. So let's give these awardees a round of applause. Staff, we always pick a person that is the battalion commander that is the top 
commander of all three companies, and then we also have a battalion sergeant major. So the winners this year, or not winners, but those who have achieved our uh, battalion commander status is Cadet Robert Ludwig. He is the battalion commander. <laughs> First Sergeant Beasley said, let's present this to Cadet Cameron Persons for her bubbly attitude. <laughs> so every day Cadet Persons comes into the office and she says, First Sergeant Beasley, how was your day today? Master Sergeant, how was your day? So no matter what type of day we're having, it always encourages us. So first sergeant wanted to make sure she had something to just recognize her encouragement to our staff. So another round of applause for her. Yeah, 
The next two tables, you can go ahead and rise and just go ahead and come the same direction. If you guys can go all the way around that way, to get it. Thank you, Lewis. Next two tables, this table, yep. You put it in your hand. Oh, you can leave it in the plastic. Next two tables here, you can go ahead and stand up and come on around. These coins are pretty special. Awesome, thank you. Some people actually buy the display cases so they can put these inside. And at this time, while we're getting our coins, color guard, once you receive your coin, if you could post yourself in the back to retire colors. Next two tables, last two tables, please. So not only will you have the model, you will have the coin, and everyone will have a polo shirt that will be delivered. So out of all your perseverance for this year and your dedication to not only going to school and to your PC, we applaud you so you can give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. 